We're going to show how to uh, set the valves on a Viking engine. This should be done on an annual inspection. And uh, uh, on a water-cooled engine like the Viking, it's uh, not something that uh, the valves will not move very easily, but still uh, they can be adjusted yearly just to make sure that um, you have the best performance out of the engine. Now, Charlie's going to do some demonstrations here for us. Now, what do you got here, Charlie? You got an engine to demonstrate this? Yes, I do. All right. So now you've been removing the wire harness and everything, which is step number one. And then I see you got you got one bolt left there. That's uh, a shoulder bolt. Yes, it is in the valve cover. And we get our <coughs> Allen wrench and ratchet out. And we remove that. We remove all the shoulder bolts. Shoulder bolts out of the valve cover. Now, if we look at that shoulder Whoops. bolt, what we see is oh, that, God. well, it's okay. What we see is that since it, it's called a shoulder bolt, and just for those people that are not familiar with that, that means that you would tighten this down until it bottoms out against the engine when you reinstall it. And the distance of the shoulder is exactly what's needed to compress the gasket and the valve cover, and that's why we use shoulder bolts. So you tighten it all the way down until it bottoms out against the valve cover during the installation. So, All right, so then uh, the cover comes off. Cover's off. All right, and you've got, um, now this engine's sitting vertically so we can work on it easily, but of course in the airplane it would be horizontal. Um, and I heard you said the, the thing to recommend would be to take on your exhaust side, which is here, this is where the exhaust system would go, you would take, uh, before you even loosen up the cover, take paper towels and just stuff them in everywhere around here, uh, around your coils. Of course, you, you could remove the coils to prepare for this and the wire harness that goes around like this, and that clears the whole area. And then take paper towels, stuff that in everywhere, and then when you lift the cover off, any oil that you find that's in these pockets will then be caught in the paper towels and you don't make a mess anywhere. So now what's for step number one? Once you get to this point and you've got a, um, the end of the engine open like that, what would you do next? I would get my 10 millimeter ratchet wrench Okay. and I would loosen up all my valves, all the intakes and exhaust. Now how can you tell what is intakes and what exhaust? Show me what the... Well, th this is the exhaust side of the engine. This is where the muffler will bolt up to. Okay, and then when you look at the valves... Uh, like explain like what is cylinder number one and how do you know that those valves belong with that cylinder well on our timing chain sprocket yeah we have the markings for each cylinder okay there'll be a a little stamp number for one two three and four I will right, we'll show that in a little bit and then and as far as once you find that and like what would be for instance one cylinder like I, I see a lot of different valves here I Number see. one cylinder. Yeah. Well, for us, we'd, we'd get our we'd get our wrench to rotate our crank. Okay. And if you look on the sprocket of the timing chain, all right, there is going to be two flats. All right. Why don't we rotate that then? Since we're doing all that right. right now, why don't we rotate? And we're going to rotate there. that around. And it, not only with the two marks, is also going to be the stamping of number one. I'm seeing all these valves move while yeah, doing it. Because I was not on top dead center of number one cylinder. Okay. So now I am approaching it and I can see my marks on my sprocket of my timing chain. Okay. You can see the slash there and the slash there. Okay. And just have them horizontally in line with the top of the engine block. Okay. All right. And that gives you top dead center. Now, looking at the manual over here, which is the Honda manual, you've also got the marks there. Uh, so if people were to get the manual, which is the uh, Honda manual part number, uh, let's see here, uh, you'd want to get the Honda manual part number 61 TK600 and that's for the Honda fit and then you go to the chapter that shows you the cylinder head and then move over to the valve clearance adjustment and you can read about the procedure here now we're just going to show it in the video now there's a mark there that says up 
And then, like you said, there are two lines. Right here is one and one here. Okay. So you just rotate the engine until those are horizontal and that shows up. And that puts the engine on top dead center as of cylinder number one. All right. So the piston is then all the way up. Now, which is number one cylinder? Number one cylinder will be the closest to the timing chain. Okay. So for those that don't familiar with engines, uh, this will be spark plug for cylinder number one, spark plug for number two, number three, and number four. And as you know, you you hear this thing about four valves per cylinder. Well, here are the four valves. There's two here and two here. And cylinder number two, moving over. We see the plug is here. We got two valves here and two valves there. That's four valves per cylinder. So what you're seeing is the top of the valve, the adjustment of the rockers on the valve. So we've set it to top dead center and we have our four valves here. Uh, what's the next procedure? Well, I would. I'll, I'm going to unloosen all of them. I'm going to unloosen all of the rocker arms. Okay. Just to get them all loose. At the same time. At the same time. Just, just break the nut loose. Okay. That would be the first step. Go right down the line. So you're on number one, top dead center, but you're just getting right. everything loose because you know that you're going to be adjusting the valves I'm on all of them. I'm going to be adjusting them all, so I might as well just get them all unloosened. Okay. Now, unloosening, is that opposite of loosening? Yeah, that's the opposite of loosening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I've got I've got the the lock nuts to the to the rocker arms all loosened. Okay. Now I'll take my screwdriver, right. and there's a slot in the rocker arm for adjustment, okay. and I'm going to back those off a half a turn. Up, also loosening it, taking the tension off, one half turn. Okay. So some of them will be really easy, and some will have a little bit. Yeah, of Yeah, a on little it. pressure because they're under load because you, th those. They're still touching the right, camshaft underneath. Right. They're not at top dead center with all the pressure off. Okay. Like number one is right like now. Like number one is. And I'll just, I'm backing them off a half turn. Because when I go to adjust those, they'll be, even though there's still tension on them, they will be very loose. They'll be way out of adjustment. All right. So, so you got them all set off. And you already set it at top dead center, so... For cylinder number one. Okay. Show us how you're going to set number one. All right. I'm going to get my feeler gauge. Okay. And... What have you done to your feeler gauge there? Well, I put a little bend, I put a little bend in the feeler gauge. Okay. Because that allows me to get in to this area freely so I get an accurate, an accurate feel on my feeler gauge. Right. If I left it now straight, I'm, 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 I'm bending it down over things and around things and okay. it's not going to be quite as accurate as now why, you can why see two the bend. Feeler gauges? Well, the intake, this is the intake side of the engine. Okay. The intake side is seven thousandths clearance. Okay. For the adjustment on the valves. Okay. So it's and a thin one. That will be the thinnest of the two. The okay. other one is going to be twelve thousandths, and that is for the exhaust side. Okay. Now why? And we why, have the same is, bend. Why is there a difference between exhaust and intake? Well, on the exhaust side, it's like it said. It's, it, it's exhaust. It's hot. Okay. So the expansion of the valve is exactly. more on the exhaust than it is on the intake. Exactly. So, so that's we need why there's more a difference. Clearance. Okay. We All need right. more of that clearance on the hotter side of the engine than uh, on the cooler side. All right, let's set the cylinder number one. Cylinder number one. My habit is I do my intake. I, I do my intake first. That's my preference. You can do a, your exhaust first if you'd like. All right. But I, I, I know I'm at top dead center. I, 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 my mocks are there. My uh, valves are loose. Right. I put my feeler gauge in there. Now I'll take my screwdriver. And with a woman's touch, I'll bring that adjustment down. Now you can see I started off with a half turn, but now that I've taken the load off, it, it, it adjusted more. I, I went more than my half turn, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. The feel of gauge is what sets 
the gap that we need. So the woman's touch, I just go down lightly, okay. and then I pull it out. And then I'll go over to the next, I'll tighten my nut down by finger. All right. Then I'll go over to the next intake valve. Now, I've seen you do these before, and uh, of course we're on video now, so there's a little tension, but but you would uh, tighten down your nut with your fingers. Before. Yes, 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 to, just to take all the extra nonsense. Right. Uh, there's no sense in leaving anything loose at this point. Okay. So we finger tighten it and then when right you, now, then just when, finger tight. And then when you pull the gauge, you should have a light drag. You'll have gauge. a little drag. Okay. And then I'll, I'll make sure that i not using the 7,000s. I need to have my 12 now okay. for the exhaust side. All right. So I put my... 12 in there, and I follow the same procedure with a woman's touch. Put a very light. You can see my fingers here. Uh, right, uh, but uh, still tight enough that there's no play. Cause, there's cause no play. Right. It, there's drag on the feel gauge. Right, and I see. And then I tighten my nut. Right, and like I said before, um, uh, tighten the nut before the feel gauge goes out, like you did on the other end. Yes. Yeah. Now I'll get my feel gauge in this one, in this exhaust. Sometimes it's a little tricky find, getting it in there. Okay, so you lift up a little bit. because well, Yeah, lift. lift it up because the valve's probably, you know, it's going to sit down. It's not going to be so easy to, to move the feel of gauge in. You'll find the spot where it'll go in the best. And I'll take my, my screwdriver again with a woman's touch. And then this time we'll tighten the nut. I go down, before. easy. Then I take my slack out with my nut. Yeah, and then pull it. And then I pull my, my right. gate. And this way out. you know that everything is good because you tighten it down, you set the nut with your fingers, and you still had some drag on the feel gauge, and that tells you that everything is okay. Now, what's the next step? Now, the next step is to get yourself an inch pounds torque wrench. All right, with a quarter inch drive as usual. Quarter yep. inch drive on this particular inch pound torque wrench all right and then we set it to the required inch pounds which is 120 inch pounds all right not foot inch all right and we set that and now i will go over to my intakes i started on my intake side so i'm going to continue the next operation from the intake side i'll put my my um torque wrench on and i'll rotate my torque wrench to tighten until it clicks okay. and I'm there and I try to put my torque wrench on and always go in the rotation of tightening I don't want to put my wrench on and go backwards and then go forward to tighten I always try to make my rotation in the same way yeah. so when it goes on I'm always in the tightening I'm not loosening and then retightening right because then you could upset your adjustment because sure. you already got it finger tight sure then I go over to my e exhaust side with the same thing I want to I, I hold my wrench, see the rotation, and I go till my wrench clicks. Torque wrench has reached its torque value. Same thing over there. And this, so you got them done, and now what do you do after that? Where we now, got? just to, to keep track of everything, I take a magic marker, any color you'd like, doesn't matter, and I mark with a mark two lines, one for this in, intake, one for this intake. And then I'll mark this one here for the exhaust, and this one here for the exhaust. And that's just to show that you are so done. I've already accomplished what I d wanted to do on this particular cylinder, and that was adjust these valves. Those shows me that that has been done. Right. And then a final check before you leave that uh, area is just make sure that the basic criteria is met, which is that the intake there valve should have a little bit of play, and, and the, the exhaust is have going a, to have a little bit more. Right, right. If you don't feel any play, you messed up somewhere. Right, there should be and, play And there both. should be a little bit more here. Now, that's cylinder number one. What's next? Okay, now we're going to get our we're gonna get a wrench that's already on our, our crank. I'm going to turn the engine I'm over. I'm going to turn the engine and over. And which way are you turning it now? I'm going clockwise. Okay, fa facing clockwise. it, facing the crankshaft. Okay, facing the crankshaft. Now, if you did this on the propeller, it would be backwards because of the gearbox. So you would actually go opposite. But in any case, uh, if you watch this video, you will be going uh, away from the exhaust. And away from the exhaust. Yeah. Ro clockwise rotation, looking at the the front of the engine, and you'll rotate to your next mark. 
Okay. And it's going to be marked there also. It's going to have a marking on there, and it's going to say number three. All right. So we've got, uh, we already did the first one. The marks are showing up and a little hatch mark on each side here and here. And then we keep going through our manual, and we see that they're also showing those how to sh rotate to cylinder number three next. As you can see, the firing order of the engine uh, is one, three, four, two. So you want to keep that in mind that you're not going to be going down the line one, two, three, four. You're going to work this in the firing order of the engine. So wow. the next cylinder you're going to be doing is number three, and that's what's showing in the manual. There are valve clearance adjustments so on the number three. So as Charlie was showing, by rotating the engine with the chain moving from the bottom up, as in the airplane, you will see a number three listed on the uh, engine. Now, these marks might be below the Viking uh, chain case that's machined, uh, and if that's the case, you can do this with a flashlight and a little mirror. So as you can see, it says number three there. And you now only have a hatch mark on one side, right. not on both sides like it used to be. So Charlie's now set it up to number three, which is the next one. Which I'm rotating right now. All right. And there's my hash mark. And I see the number three there and with the, the lighting. Right. Yeah, yep. perfect. And the, three is, the number three is right here. All your numbers will be right there on, okay. the, on the timing chain gear. And then level with the little mark over there. Right, and you'll have that level with that level with yeah. the with the end. Now, what is number three? Where is number three number, cylinder? Number three is right here. All right, so you'll be counting the like the spark plugs or the fuel injectors one, two, and three, and then it's the four valves right up from that. All right, let's, correct. Why don't we set those and show how that's done? It's of course right. going to be a repeat, but that's what this video is about: is to show how the procedure is done in order to have it done the same every time. Now you have everything loosened already. Everything is loose. Okay. I started right off the bat with loosening all my valves. All right. And now I'll go back and I'm on my, my intake side again. I like, to, I like to just keep it repetitive. Okay. Do my intake first all the time, every time, so I'm not confused. You know, I just stay with a, a system. Okay. And my system is work the intake side first. All right. So I'll, I'll find my right feeler gauge for the intake, which is seven thousandths. All right. And that's uh, in metric. It's, uh, what does it say, one? W one seventy-eight. Okay. So. Point one seventy-eight. Uh, all right. And that's the millimeters. Yep. Right. And I'll put that in there again. All right. So we, uh, we did the uh, valve adjustment on the uh, Viking engine. Um, do you find this to be a difficult procedure, or what? What are the pitfalls when you do this, Charlie? What What are the things to look out for? Definitely, do not use any part of the valve train assembly for a work surface for storing a socket or holding a nut or a washer, because you don't want to drop anything inside. While you're working. While you're working. And then, of Do course... Do not use it for a table. And then keep keep your tools nice and organized. And clean. Make a make a sheet that shows the, the firing order, like you did. Uh, get the Honda manual. Um, and just basically be very, very uh, organized. Now, the valve cover here has a... Uh, you can get a new gasket from Honda. They're not very expensive. Um, they, do ex they do swell up over time, so it's probably worth getting a new one. And then there is some uh, gray right stuff. We, we don't use the, the gray right stuff for anything other than uh, we always use the black because it really binds and seals quite well. But this will be one place where we take a little bit of gray right stuff, and that it's a different part number made by Permatex. And we, we put a little uh, bit on here with our finger all the way around so we have a, 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 just a thin layer of it everywhere. And that's because on the Viking engine, the valve cover is horizontal versus uh, uh, vertical as it would be in the Honda Fit vehicle. And it helps to seal the uh, cover a little bit better. And then put the cover back on with the uh, shoulder bolts, get them all started, tighten them down equally. And uh, if you were to tighten those to also to 120 uh, inch pounds, that would be uh, good. But as we said in the beginning, the actual height of the bolt is set by the shoulder. 
Thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you.